The people buried here were among the early settlers of New England. And these school students are making sure their names never fade away by taking part in a research project with the local historical society. Jonathan W. Eaton. We didn't do Jonathan. You did it. No. Okay. The students are part of a high school appropriately called the community school, where the curriculum revolves around service to the community and cooperation with the community. And it is usually the living who benefit. The idea behind the community school is to allow people to see themselves as part of a community, not as an individual that needs to compete against others. When New England's first settlers arrived, they wanted to create a home from home, and the unpredictable weather certainly helped them feel they'd never left. Tamworth in New Hampshire is a relatively remote settlement of around 2,500 people, tucked into the foothills of the White Mountains, which are usually covered in snow when they're not covered in cloud. Just outside the town, in a converted and extended farmhouse, is found the community school. It provides an alternative to, certainly to the public schools in the area, uh, which tend to be regional high schools, so that co collections of many children from originally very small towns put together in one large building. Um, it's also an alternative in that it, th it thinks and does things in a way that most traditional schools don't. So th speaking about and learning about sustainability, having kids actually work on projects to support what they're learning, um, taking field trips, going out into the community, inviting the community into the school. Uh, makes it, those are some of the things that make it an alternative school. School fees are just over £6,000 a year, although an assistance scheme provides an average reduction of 50% for nearly half of the students. The school has just 45 students aged between 11 and 18. It may be small, but it's made a big impact by getting out and about. Today, community school students have been invited to breakfast at the local elementary school. It's a thank you for the work they carry out twice a week with younger children. What difference does it make having students here from the community school? Oh, it's, it's incredible. The connection that the older students make to the younger students and their insight uh, during different projects are just absolutely fabulous. Do you like the older students coming here to teach you? Why? Because it's fun. It's, it's really kind of fun to have someone looking up to you and know that you're, that you're really giving that, you know. Sounds like you want to be a teacher. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, two days a week is good. <laughs> the link between the two schools has been created by a teacher who moved from the elementary school to the community school. In the community school, there's a lot more freedom to teach what I want. And here, um, where I worked with the um, at-risk students, it, um, it was uh, prescribed. There was set things that you had to do. So it's, it's very different. So you found it more fulfilling as a teacher? Yes, definitely. But one thing is compulsory at the community school. Every student must complete at least 150 hours of community service a year. Here they're helping a school employee whose husband is seriously ill. Learning with books is not the only thing we need to learn to do. We need to learn to work with people, get along and help everybody in the community. With my husband being ill, it's something that I can't do on my own. Um, my children are grown and gone. So having, knowing I can rely on the community, and specifically the students at the community school for help, um, makes my life easier. Um, being someone who's also given help, it makes it a lot easier to accept help. Every community school morning is devoted to coursework, such as this, which involves logging and mapping graves, and then later finding out more about the occupants. Each course lasts four weeks, and they cover a wide range of topics, from consumer maths to mountain ecology, and from music theory to American literature. But they mostly have one thing in common, and it's not difficult to guess what it might be. They involve going out into the community. 
This class is a GPS slash GIS mapping class. And so what we're doing is going around to a lot of the local cemeteries, kids love cemeteries. Um, and we're becoming familiar with um, the individuals who lived in the town during the early part of the settlement here. All right, so we're gonna take this reading on uh, Sister Evelyn Smith. Um, and you can see it's a pretty recent uh, stone. Yeah, I think she's a nun. And she may very well have been a uh, nun. Oh, I personally think that it's referring to the fact that she is the sister of uh, another Smith. It's a very, very old community. A lot of interesting um, places around here. So it contributes to the general knowledge of the area. And it also helps by familiarizing the students with some of their own history, which they might not otherwise have the opportunity to experience. And they love it. It's actually very interesting. I like the, learning the history of ev where places are, who the people were, and maybe learning about their lives. I mean, how it's very different now. How does this actually help the community? <laughs> the community of the living, I It helps think. us um, learn about our history, and um, history is really important because you like learn from it. It helps the future a lot. It's a bit spooky, isn't it? <laughs> a little. I like it, though. I think it's, it's clear that student learning, if it's not connected to something real, means very little. In our, in our county in New Hampshire, um, we have a very high dropout rate, the highest in the state from, from high school. And I, I do think it has to do with students not feeling that what, what they're learning applies to anything. Um, so being out in the community and watching adults go about their lives is a, a very stimulating and, 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 and makes things real for students. The art and nature course also takes students outside and it brings in a local professional artist. Butterflies working on what I call an Art Nouveau project. Hi. So we... <laughs> so we looked at some examples of Art Nouveau and then I told them to pick different plants or animals. Does it help you coming into a classroom like this, not as a teacher, but as a community artist? I think that being an artist, I'm always exploring different aspects of myself as an artist, but also uh, the community as I see it. Like, I'm very, uh, very much working on landscapes right now myself. So I will bring that aspect into the classroom. It makes a difference that Candice is a professional artist. Yes, because then I know that she's not just making it up as she goes along <laughs> because she does this. She knows what she's doing or otherwise people wouldn't pay her to teach or paint. <laughs> well, because she's not always here, it's more um, like special. special, I guess. Thank you, Amy. In the year that I've been here as director, um, I have uh, been informally counting the number of people that we've been able to, to ask to come and share their knowledge and, and skills with us. So uh, we're close to about 50 people that have come in to, to help out, um, to speak to the students. We are able to, to, to really look at everybody around us as, as resources. And, um, somebody who you might not give a second glance at um, will have a, a, a wealth of, of family history or will be a wonderful quilter willing to put together quilts with students. Afternoons in school are taken up with more formal classes. In keeping with the ethos of cooperation, there is no competition and no testing in the classroom. It means, of course, there are no grades to worry about and certainly no league tables. The only exam these students might take is the scholastic aptitude test demanded by some colleges. How do you assess whether a student's doing well in a subject? Well, um, by looking at them in class, by listening to the questions that they have, by watching how active they are in the, um, in the events of the class, um, by how well they work with others, um, how, mo how motivated they are. Those are the things that we assess students on. So it's really down to the, the teachers writing assessments rather than the students taking the tests. 
It is. We, we do hold students to a list of things. You know, in order to pass this class, you must do this, 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 and this. What, what's this, this, and this? Well, you need to turn in all of your homework assignments. You need to be cooperative in class. Um, you need to be able to work in, in cooperation with one or two other students to you need to submit a project every week. It, and it depends on the class. So that's up front, so that it's not as a mystery to the students. You won't find competition on the sports field either. In fact, you won't find a sports field. The school's land is devoted to farming, including a four-acre organic vegetable garden. Look at your broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a new one. Students can add to their tally of community service hours by working on the farm. And the work, of course, goes on whatever the weather. Most of this stuff needs to get in the soil quick. It, uh, it's, we're stretching its length as far as pot time. That's why we're cleaning it up, uh, to get it so that it's, uh, it'll be good and nice and, and, uh, and, and sturdy, ready to get into the ground soon. Do you like tending to broccoli, or would you rather have your nose in a book? Um, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like a mix of both. <laughs> I don't think I would um, pick leaves off of broccoli in my free time for fun, but... <laughs> it's not your favourite <laughs> No, not really, but I don't mind it. <laughs> the vegetable garden provides a source of income and a resource for teaching. And it also ties the school even more closely to the community through a scheme called Community Supported Agriculture. Local people put up a few hundred dollars at the start of the season, which entitles them to a share of the crops. It's really important to us that this farm ties into, you know, all different layers of the school's curriculum and all, you know, the, where the mathematics, uh, writing, reading, history, all that. Uh, we have the community piece that we really want to, we're here as a service to the community. We're here to, to serve the community. Um, the, and then the ecological piece, we're trying to do this in a responsible fashion. We're trying to do this whole agriculture piece in a responsible fashion that will, in the long term, do as little harm as possible while we're providing a service for our community. So it's like one of these, we have these layered bottom lines that are pulling us in all directions, albeit wonderful directions. A whole school meeting is held once a week when students can raise any issue and make suggestions for courses and activities. And some of the ideas that um, students who brainstormed about were making summer snacks, <laughs> writing poetry in the woods. I think the, the main advantages are that students can really participate in shaping the course as it, as it goes on. I think some, uh, the disadvantages are, are that it can cause things to be irregular. But I think f being flexible and knowing how to deal with that is part of, part of the world that we live in. Part of the real world especially in the new world. The early settlers, of course, wouldn't have got very far without the ability to adapt and the desire to cooperate, the spirit that lives on in the community school.